Hello, this is James Berger, and this is the Bakersfield Californians Off the Press Show. And we are here today with our guest, uh, current high school district candidate, Jen Bloomquist. Welcome. Hi, hey, thanks. So, it's wonderful to be here again. Of course, always, the, uh, I enjoy being on the show with our co-hosts, uh, Nicole Parra. Uh, from Cal State Bakersfield uh, Political Science Faculty and uh, our Government Affairs Coordinator and Consultant, <laughs> Russ Johnson. Um, thanks so much for joining us uh, here on Bakersfield.com and uh, Bakersfield California's website. Today we also have a special guest uh, over in the uh, the scary chair, uh, our uh, intrepid uh, um, reporter covering uh, education, Harold Pierce. Good morning. Thanks. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, Jen, you're running for the Kern High School District uh, Board. Uh, it's a very interesting board right now. <laughs> very interesting. Um, but what we need to know a little bit about is you and where you come from and, and your background here and a little bit more about why you're running. Okay, well, I mean, to start with the present, uh, I'm a business owner. I'm actually a licensed contractor. I own Stars and Stripes Tree Care, which has been in the family um, for years and years. My grandfather started it as Swen Tree Service, and I'm no longer a Swen. I, I got married, so my name changed. So the name changed to Stars and Stripes, and now I work with my family. And then I also have a day job at the uh, Department of Human Services. Okay. So I do intake for CalWORKs, CalFresh, Medi-Cal. So I, I see a lot of people out in the community and, and I get to hear a lot of their stories. Okay, all right. So tell us, since you're, it sounds like your family is from around here and has been involved in the community for a while, tell us about kind of where you, how you grew up here in town. Were you born and raised here or? I was, okay. I was. Um, regardless of how I actually sound when I talk, I was born here in Bakersfield. And I went to BHS. I graduated in 2001, Home of the Drillers. <laughs> and I was in the band. I played drums. I was okay. in the drum line. I did drama. I did all the fun things. And then I scooted off to London for five years and stuck around, came back. And when I came back, I started to get into a lot of community activism. And I got together a couple of groups. and have uh, been really active in the community lately. Okay, so what did you do in, in uh, Britain? Uh, obviously, it's a fun place. I, I spent a year at university, and then I ended up getting married and traveling around. Fortunately, the marriage part didn't work out so well, uh, so I came back. Okay. But then when I came back, I wanted to come back. I wanted to get into activism and making my community better uh, now that I was back. Okay, okay, great. So you're our first candidate for school board. So, um, you know, this is a school board's a different kind of race. You know, some people, they go, hey, I want to run for city council because I want to, you know, clean up the streets or I want to work on planning issues. You know, some people say, oh, I want to run for state legislature because <laughs> I, I want to spend, spend four <laughs> days in the state capitol and three days back at home. But wh why did you say, you know, Kern High, this is where I want to go and make a difference. I've been following the Board of Trustees for a while, and I have been um, at times happy about some of their decisions that they've made, and I've been at times outraged and not at all happy about some of the decisions and some of the things that I've been hearing from some of the individual trustees. Um, especially when it comes to talking about people in our community, people like LGBT students in our community who are being called mentally ill and perverts. I mean, this, is, this was from a trustee and talking about his students. And I don't think that someone in that position of power should be speaking like that about his students. Okay. And, uh, and so... What, what tell us about kind of the moment where you decided to run for this position? Obviously, you're running for the seat uh, that's being vacated by um, uh, Chad. by Chad Vegas, and uh, he's been a prominent part of that board, um, very conservative, uh, religious person. What? Uh, when did you he decide that this was the seat you were going to? Was it before he left, or after he left, or? And how did you come to that decision? 
it was about this time last year, actually a little bit earlier than this time last year. I had just moved into the district. I actually just got remarried last year on July 4th because my husband wanted to remember the date. <laughs> so uh, I remarried. I moved that's in. A, that's an easy way to do that. <laughs> it yeah. is. It is. It's very convenient. And you know what? And good for your business, yeah, right? Stripes. Right? Yeah. right? And plus we get fireworks on our anniversary right. every year. Go. That's great. That's good. <laughs> so um, I had just moved into the district, and I realized that I moved into the very tip corner of the District 3. And at that time... Trustee Vegas was still in that seat, hadn't made any noise about wanting to leave, and I wanted to unseat him. Okay. And uh, and I, I take it, you know, just from assumption that that some of the things you were talking about, being displeased about the the the, the dialogue on the board, is why you wanted to run against him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I had heard not only about. His, his talking about the LGBT community, but I'd also heard from friends of mine who are teachers. I have a lot of friends who are teachers and they'd all expressed to me how scared they were to speak out, uh, to, to criticize or, or even question decisions made by some of the trustees in fear of retaliation. As we have seen recently we, with, Chief, with Chief Lopetecki being basically retaliated against for whistleblowing about something that actually I, I know about because I, at one point, I was authorized to use CLETS. I was a, a sheriff's dispatcher. And so I, I know how serious it is to keep that kind of information to yourself and to see him be retaliated against because he was doing the right thing was outrageous to me. So a year ago, you're, you're hearing some of the statements the trustee's making, and you're involved with some community organizations. Um, why did you decide, I'll put my name out? Was there you know, a group the, of folks who wanted to um, run, or and how was it that you decided that, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put my name down um, and run? I, I did some asking around. Mm -hmm. I have some political friends, and... And I was asking about this race next mm -hmm. year. I was asking, did we have anybody? Right. Had anybody made any noise about wanting to run, wanting to get in there and, and dispel some of this mm -hmm. nasty atmosphere on the board? And everyone I spoke to said, no, no, I don't live in the district, or no, I work for the district, I can't mm -hmm. run. And it kind of came down to me at the point where I just said, well, mm -hmm. I'm here, I'm available, I'm interested, I care about what goes on in our community. I care about the students of our community. I care about especially our teachers and administrators who are there on the front lines. And I want to be there to support them. Mm -hmm. And I wanna, I wanna change the atmosphere on the board so that it doesn't, it doesn't have this nasty atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So you talk about atmosphere and you talk about change, but one could argue that that's gonna, you know, Boards change all the time, right? With who's sitting on them, who's not. And with uh, um, Chad Vegas already leaving, you're already gonna get some change, right? Because it, you know he's there and he, fu he functions in one way when he's there and then when someone new comes in, the board's gonna function and relationships are gonna change between the board members, that happens. I saw it happen on the city council when some council members went off, couch left, Bob Smith came on. You know, it's, it was a different dynamic amongst the council members. So you're already gonna get a change. So I wanna focus on like some of the, the issues that are currently kind of going on right now and go, how would you deal with them differently? So I know we've got a lot of issues and, <laughs> but let's, let's, for example, let's take the, um, the chicken lawsuit, right? How would you have handled that different than the way the district handled it now? Well, there's not a whole lot you can do when a lawyer dresses up in a chicken suit and walks into a classroom. I mean, that's that's really hard to deflect the PR from the negative PR from, from something like that. And that comes with a change in the, in the, in the view of school security and school safety for our students as well. And sometimes things like that, when you have kids, excited and running around, it's, it's hard to control that for the teachers. Um, so sometimes things like that maybe can't be avoided. And that's unfortunate. 
but it's it's something that we need to work on as well. Okay. Um. Well, were you going to go through a couple issues, Russell? I, I was. I, actually, I thought James <laughs> because, was going to tell us. That was like a softball pitch. I thought you, I thought you were t- going to tell us we had to go to I break. I cleared my okay. throat. It was, oh. it was uh, yeah. So, yeah. free. Um, yeah, I, I feel there's a couple so more. So you look at what's going on at the district now, and um, some would probably argue that there's been an issue of transparency recently. Uh, or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. Uh, and I've heard some complaints from some different uh organizations uh, who kind of are more kind of budget taxpayer watchdog groups and they've tried to do some some public records requests and didn't really get answers right away. What would you do to work on transparency issues at the current high school district? I would, for me personally, I would have an open door. If somebody's having an issue, getting the information that they are, that they're entitled to as a tax paying citizen of this county and of the district, I want to see them get that information that they need. Because not only do I want to be held accountable, I want to be able to hold our schools and the district accountable as well. And I think that is the first step, and it's a big step towards actual transparency in the district. Mm-hmm. I think Harold has written a little bit about how even some of the trustees were having challenges in um, getting some of the information they were looking for. Um, uh, you know, as a new trustee, that can be a little bit difficult uh, to, there's a, there is, I think both uh, my co-hosts would say, there is a learning curve when you first get into a position. How would you quickly and effectively increase that transparency from the district to the board itself? Who's the boss? Well, you, uh, you do tend to catch more flies with honey than, uh, than vinegar. So, Maybe maybe not throwing my, my weight around would be the first kind of step of, you know, asking for things nicely and, and putting a please and a thank you in there and, and actually building relationships with the administrators, with the teachers who can affect the kind of change that they need to affect at their level that would help me to affect the kind of change that I can affect as a trustee. Go ahead and had a couple more issues before. Well, <laughs> uh, how would you deal with it though? When uh, I think the complaints that you see you saw in the paper about transparency are when the administrator was just saying, "Hey, no, I'm not, I'm not going to give the info," or and they were like, "Hey, how is it we're not privy to information that we need to know and then we need to be able to respond to?" It y- flies uh, with honey is one approach, but. What do you give us an example of your personal life where you've had someone who was accountable to you or someone you had to hold accountable? They didn't do what they were supposed to do. How would you how did you deal with that situation and how would you deal with it on the current high to make sure that you were getting the info you needed so you could be a good board member? I I just like to gently remind them, maybe frequently, uh, that this is part of what they signed up to do. If they signed up for a public school district, they need to be publicly accountable to the public. They can't run around, they can't hide, they they can't, you know, hide their things from the public. They have to, especially school-related items that, that people want to know about, that parents especially want to know about. Because most well, we're we're accountable to the parents whose students we're teaching. How critical is it to get to uh, if you're going to change, because it sounds like what we're talking about is, you know, gradual change in the culture to develop uh, the correct relationship. How do you work with the other board members to do that? Because it's, you know, you're just going to be one person. You you can't affect a whole lot of change as a single person. Mm-hmm. Right. Even sitting on the board. Right. Right. Um, well, I've I've heard that it can uh, it can get kind of heated in there, although I have also heard that they're all really nice guys, and I, I believe that. And so I would, I would build up those relationships again. That's, that's something that's critical to, to running any kind of district like that or, or a board functioning as a whole is having good relationships with each other so that you can get the information you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm interested, I think, when we come back from break is to understand more of kind of your 
uh, political background. I've, I've seen a few things, and I'm just kind of curious about some of the statements you've made about uh, your beliefs and how that transfers into a conservative district um, from one extreme uh, to the other and how that will help you or hurt you as you get your campaign going the next, well, you're in the campaign the next 67 days. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Uh, well, we'll, ta- we'll go to a quick break. Uh, this is Off the Press with the Bakersfield Californian. I'm James Berger. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with Jim Bloomquist, candidate for the current high school district 